What's up, guys? This is Derek Kirby back in the studio. We are not in the car today. It's a refreshing change. But we're back with another interesting Maverick story for you here today. We have a story from ESPN's Tim McMahon talking about additional details and context surrounding the departure of Rick Carlisle this past offseason. Now, Carlisle was the head coach of the Mavericks for 13 years. He helped lead them to their only championship in franchise history and was, next to Popovich, the second longest tenured head coach in the league with his current team. So for him to leave, something had to be up. And the fact that there wasn't a lot of context other than Rick resigning and essentially leading to questions of, because it followed the Donnie Nelson departure, is this a show of solidarity? Is this something where, effectively, Rick and Donnie had clashed and disagreed with uh, Harlebow, and that being a main factor in the front office dysfunction. They left, and it took time before Bob Bulgaris was gone. That being the case, what does it mean for the Mavericks? Well, the details and context we get now from, again, Tim McMahon at ESPN, paint a picture of basically day one rift. Maybe not day one, but midway through Luka's rookie season, a major rift in his relationship with Rick Carlisle. This stemming from him, quote, hating the way Carlisle treated teammates, and other staff members. The key example in this article, and Dennis Smith has, as I give away the name there, Dennis Smith Jr., uh, has himself verified and said, even with the article being on the money, there's more to it. But Dennis Smith Jr. was not who Rick Carlisle wanted in the 2017 NBA draft. He wanted Donovan Mitchell now, If you look at the career trajectory for those two guys, you're like, yeah, that's a fair assumption. That's a fair assessment to make. But even still, midway through DSJ's, uh, I almost said freshman year, rookie year in Dallas, Rick Carlisle had basically determined he was done with the experiment. He did not see everyday starter potential for DSJ. Now, again, we've talked about this before. Dennis Smith Jr. came in and was the first major lottery pick for the Mavericks in a long, long time. The first time they were forced to really try their hand, the first time that they had not been able to cobble together some veteran squad to at least make the playoffs and get bounced in, you know, whether it was swept or losing in five or six games in the opening round. So there was a lot riding on him. He was basically came in, he was the hype prospect he had rookie of the year hype it didn't pan out obviously donovan mitchell got that well i got a share of that i guess um yeah that was a whole crazy thing that's a different story there's more to it than that but even still dennis smith jr was a highly hyped touted prospect guys like lebron james Dwayne wade etc we're talking about him every time they played dallas after the game they were talking about the kid's potential carlisle However, midway through his rookie year, decided, no, I don't see it. And so when the Mavericks then got Luka Doncic in the subsequent draft, there was a question about like, okay, is this A and B? Like, who's who's the number one guy? At the time, going into that first season, it wasn't entirely clear. We assumed Luka was going to be the guy, but we thought it would be a 1A, 1B kind of thing. Not at all the case. Dennis Smith Jr. needs the ball in his hands to be productive. He's actually done a pretty good job sort of resurrecting his career with Portland. Good for him. Uh, New York nearly broke him completely. It didn't work out long-term in Detroit, despite a couple early flashes. And now he's trying to kind of rebuild his career. Whether or not he can be, you know, a, a quality role player remains to be seen. So to that respect, you say, okay, maybe Rick wasn't, wrong or entirely incorrect but the idea is how he treated people rick carlisle we've said is a very old school guy and this is why it those guys aren't really hanging around in the league so much these days it's not the same as it used to be you can't 
berate and tear apart these guys and humiliate them in front of their teammates and the media. You just can't. They're not going to respond to that the same way. And whether you want to say it's the wussification of the world or not is irrelevant because that's just the nature of the league now. Luka Doncic was resentful. And so were other veteran players in that locker room. Resentful of how Rick treated Dennis Smith Jr. Basically accusing him in team meetings of being jealous of Luka and of not being a team player because he wasn't wasn't in Rick's estimation adopting or converging to this idea of I want you to be an off the bench 3 and D kind of guy. You're not going to get a lot of touches and shots, but I want you to be this bit player. Dennis Smith Jr. was trying to do that. He was he took pride. He got his tooth knocked out, I think it was against uh I think the Clippers. He took a, an errant elbow from Patrick Beverly that knocked out uh, a tooth. And he finished the game without a tooth and even made huge plays that won that game for the Mavericks. Like, grit and determination and heart, all of that represented how Dennis Smith Jr. was playing. But he was not getting the respect or appreciation from his coach that he should have. And when it became clear that Rick wanted nothing to do with him, yeah, he stepped away from the team for a minute citing lower back issues, which we knew at the time was BS, but it helped facilitate his trade to New York. It didn't work out there, but the fact is it was never going to work here with Rick. And he even had said afterwards, when it was already not going so great in New York and people were already talking about, oh, where's he going to end up next? He was already alluding to the fact that he'd be willing to come back to Dallas if Rick wasn't there. That's why some people thought this summer he might have found his way back to Dallas before he eventually landed in Portland. Now, Dallas instead uh, signed guys like Frank Nilakina, and you know we know how much money they threw at like Sterling Brown and Reggie Bullock. It didn't happen, and I'm a little surprised that it didn't, but that's a different matter. The thing is, Rick tore these guys apart, and the fact that you had veterans like DeAndre Jordan, Wesley Matthews, guys who had been around, Harrison Barnes, that they didn't appreciate how he was treating Dennis Smith Jr. tells you this isn't just like, a, oh, it's a millennial thing. No, no, no. Or a Zoomer thing. Like, no, this seems very clear that the team did not like how the coach was handling things. And Dirk's generation is just different. You just dealt with it. You just dealt with it. There's not another way to put it. Like, There wasn't any alternative. That was what was normal to you. And so you grinned and bared it. And Dirk has always spoken highly of Carlisle. But if Dirk came into the league now, I don't think he would view Carlisle in the same respect if he were, you know, playing for him as, you know, we see with like Luca and some of these other guys. The bridge burned out. Players were questioning Carlisle's authority. You saw early on in the previous season, this last year, Luca outright questioning Carlisle, like, who's in charge, you or Bob? Because Rick leaned heavily on the analytics that Bob Volgaris was providing, and it was a matter of, yeah, Rick might have had final say on the decisions, but the team didn't respect him. And Luca was getting more and more openly defiant of his head coach to the extent we're in a playoff game, a game six with a chance to close out the Clippers and advance to the second round. Rick called a timeout. Luca didn't agree with and Luca's throwing F bombs his way. Why did you call an effing timeout? I'm paraphrasing, but that was essentially the spirit of it. And it proved to be a mistake because it allowed the Clippers who were stumbling a little bit to steady themselves and then to take back control after Dallas had just started to knock them back on their heels again late in that game. That's a different matter, but the point is, Luka did not like or respect Rick Carlisle, and the team as a whole was drifting further and further from Carlisle, and it just seems that Rick was kind of a product of a past generation And he didn't adapt well enough. Yes, the article says that he made efforts last season to try and adapt and to repair the relationship a little bit. Maybe he saw that, hey, I can't, my goodwill that I built up from previous success here 
isn't going to weather the face of the franchise outright being defiant of me and challenging me openly, publicly on the court in huddles and etc. I can't keep doing this. I have to try and fix this if I want to stay here. And so he would go to the media and he would heap praise on Luca, compare him to Larry Bird and Magic Johnson and Dirk Nowitzki and all that. And that's great. The problem is it was, it was overcompensation. And I think Luca saw that because Luca said, I still disagree with how you're running things. My impression of you and therefore my perspective of you is still shaped by wildly negative events. Dennis Smith Jr. and Luka Doncic were tight. They didn't play together more than half a season, but Dennis Smith Jr. immediately welcomed Luka into his circle when he came to Dallas. They lived in the same apartment complex, and they spent hours together hanging out and playing video games. They were tight. And the fact that Rick was openly humiliating Dennis, reducing him to nothing, basically treating him like a scrub who was lucky to even be in the league, knowing how Luca was his close friend, did not sit well. It just, it was a really weird, not well thought out plan, it seems like, by Rick. Because especially if you were already determined that you weren't going to be sticking with Dennis and trying to, you know, do what was best for him, Overall, that you were done with him and essentially hoping and waiting for a chance to jettison him. Now, you, you pulled off the KP trade, and I still think that's a trade you had to do. It just didn't pan out. But it's still an interesting perspective because if people talk about like the Luca KP relationship dynamic, and that predates obviously, they know each other well before Luca knew Dennis Smith Jr. But there is a little bit of that association sort of thing where it's like, I don't blame you, Luca. This is KP. I don't blame you. I understand this wasn't your call, your decision. But I am also aware that my my best friend on the team is gone to welcome you in. And I'm not happy about how he was treated and his departure in general is kind of a crappy deal. That's not going to get things on the best foot to start out. And that's just another way that I think the franchise in, in general mishandled this situation badly so it's interesting it's interesting to see this finally come out this context that gives us some insight to how the winning uh winningest coach you could say in mavericks history basically uh pieced out two weeks after the season ended and we had speculation on why we kind of had ideas but this paint, paints it in a much better context. I'm sure there's still more. Dennis Smith alluded to it himself on Twitter after the story broke this morning. I'm curious to see what additional information we might get from this. And in general, how the franchise is going to continue You know, this new trajectory. It's a new era, but it doesn't really feel like it yet. They're still kind of working with the shell. And it feels like the, the shell of Rick's team. And so the kind of looming presence of Carlisle still hovers over this team a little bit, it feels like. So we'll see. Let me know. What do you think about this story? Is this blown out of proportion or does everything finally make sense to you as it kind of makes sense to me here? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and until next time, guys, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace!